All right, fasting with diabetes, a concise guide for you. Well, a lot of people are going into fasting season, which is Ramadan, right? Happy Ramadan to all the Muslim brothers and sisters. And also remember, fasting is something that is recommended in every religion. And now we are realizing that actually it is very good for you. Well, duh, thousands of years ago, prophets, Moses, Jesus, and Prophet Muhammad, they all said the same thing. Now you realize that it's actually healthy for you. Well, we should have listened, right? And I hope this month brings everybody the serenity, the peace, and understanding. So Muslim, Jewish, Christian, no matter what, we are all human beings. We all come from Adam and Eve. Let's love each other. Let's support each other. Especially during these times, there is no reason to be mad with each other because it is not generally the people the politicians are poisoning us unfortunately putting us against each other so let's not do that and if you are fasting for religious or non-religious reasons i'm going to tell you how to do it right and i hope i will be helpful for you today now of course fasting it requires a strategic approach depending on what you're doing right so especially when certain medications are part of your daily treatment some diabetics cannot fast at all and will point them out as well now let's talk about sulfonylurea users so when the dining table is temporarily off limits remember to only take medications like glipizide before a significant meal so you don't want to take your glipizide or glimepiride before a small meal and then fast for a long time that's you're looking for trouble for low blood sugar so an extended fast more than 10 hours may call for and maybe a half dose. So if you're taking, for example, 10 milligram of glipizide and you're going to fast for a long time, consider taking half of that. Now, this is not a medical advice and some people will say, oh, you're, you're trying to give medical advice. I'm not. I'm just giving you some educational piece here and it's a common sense, right? So you don't have to be a doctor to think, okay, well, if you know how the medication works, you should be able to think that, okay, I should take half of that because I'm going to be fasting for 10, 12 hours or I'm going to go work out or I'm going to be physically very active. It is wise to reduce your dose unless you're running very high already. So if you're running like 300, maybe reducing the dose is not a very good idea but if you are fairly well controlled and of course every advice that I give take it with a grain of salt because I am not seeing you individually I'm giving an advice online trying to be helpful however you still need to discuss with your healthcare provider if you are not really sure what you're doing and if you're not very careful and not checking your blood sugars very often especially now let's talk about insulin dependent fasters right so you should continue monitoring your blood sugar levels and make adjustments based on your readings. So from a fasting standpoint, if you're religious fasting, injecting insulin is not going to break your fast. But if you go low, you have to break your fast, right? You have to have sugar. You cannot insist on keeping your fast if your blood sugars are low. So you have to be very careful with insulin. Now, some insulin-dependent brutal patients, especially type 1 diabetics, may not be able to fast at all. Because if your blood sugars are a roller coaster, you're going up and down, every little carb is sending you to sky, and every time you are a little active, you bottom out. We call this a brutal diabetic. In those cases, you should not fast. No matter how religious you are, you have to really take care of yourself. And God is not going to like you if you are trying to harm yourself, right? I'm not a religious scholar, but it just makes sense to me. Now, hydration often overshadowed by the intricate dance of monitoring glucose levels and managing medications, but hydration remains a pivotal aspect of managing diabetes. So if you are dehydrated and your blood sugars are soaring, your kidneys can get into trouble. So during the fasting periods, if you're not dry fasting, which is, you know, every religion is a different type of fasting, but for Ramadan, most Muslims will do dry fasting, which can be dangerous. So you have to be very careful if you're dry fasting, if you have kidney problems, if you are prone to dehydration, you should be very careful about, you know, fasting. And if you are not confident that you will be able to get over it without significant problems, I would say be on the cautious side and do not fast. Now, when you're not having regular food intake, that can sometimes camouflage the signals of dehydration until the, it becomes alarmingly pronounced and you may find yourself in the hospital with kidney failure, which is not fun. Now, adequate hydration facilitates the kidney's Herculean task of 
filtering the glucose from the bloodstream. So whenever you're going to start your fasting, load yourself up with a lot of electrolytes and water to make sure that your body can actually stand long periods of fasting. And without sufficient fluid intake, again, it's going to exacerbate your blood sugar levels. And in some cases, it will lead to kidney failure and some other problems. So be very careful. So yeah, it is not only beneficial, but it is non-negotiable pillar of fasting safely with diabetes. Now let's talk about some specific guidelines. Now let's say you're taking a basal insulin. What are they? Like Tujeo, Traceba, uh, Levimir, Bausiglar, Insulin, Glargine, uh, you name it. There's a lot of them nowadays, right? Uh, Orlantis, another common one, right? So you can continue the usual dose of basal insulin if your blood sugar levels are above the target, especially if you're type 1. You cannot stop insulin no matter what because you have, you have no insulin in your body. When you're fasting, your insulin levels come down. So sometimes if you're a controlled diabetic, you may have to cut back on the basal insulin as well. So you can reduce by around 20% to compensate for that increased insulin sensitivity when you fast. And you need to monitor your blood sugars closely. So sometimes initially when you fast, your blood sugars may actually want to go up. And, and that's because you are very insulin resistant in the beginning and not having any food may actually drive it up. So don't jump on reducing your insulin right away unless your blood sugars are already in the tight range. So if you're like running 200, 250 milligram per deciliter, I wouldn't just cut on your insulin because you're fasting. Wait until your blood sugar come down to like low 100 ranges and then consider cutting back around 20%. Now let's talk about exercise, right? So you may not want to exercise, but if you're physically active, that sometimes counts as an exercise. So if you're combining especially insulin and sulfuria with physical exertion during a fasting, you definitely are looking for trouble, then you may end up with really drop in your blood sugar. So I would say if you're fasting, try to avoid exercise to maintain the equilibrium in your body. If you're not on insulin or sulfonylurea and you are not dry fasting, you know, incorporating some exercise slowly is not going to hurt. So I would recommend that. Now, supplements. Uh, you're going to ask me that question as well. A lot of you are taking SugarMD supplements at SugarMDs.com. They are allies in any fasting agenda. They remain neutral, right? They don't cause low blood sugar. So causing no disruptions with or without food. So you can continue your supplements, which can help maintain healthy blood sugar levels. Now, what about bolus insulin, right? So you're going to end up taking bolus insulin when you break your fast. Definitely do not take bolus insulin like a Humalog or Novolog, Admelog, um, insulin Ospart, insulin Lispro. These are, we call them fast acting or short acting insulins, right? You don't want to take them when you're not eating. However, you know, let's say you're eating dinner now, it's time to break your fast, just take it 15-20 minutes before you eat. So some people take it after eating, which is not going to really help because insulin takes around 15-20 minutes to start working and then around up to 90 minutes, sometimes up to two hours to show the peak action. So if you are waiting and if you are scared to take the insulin, you're taking always after a meal, your blood sugar may be going up already before the insulin starts kicking in. So be careful about that as well. However, don't take it too early either. If you're not sure you're going to have a meal, don't take a short acting or fast acting insulin and the next thing you know you're bottoming out because you didn't eat for an hour and then your blood sugar was on the low side to begin with because you were fasting now how long can you fast really up to 16 hours is a green light for fasting for most diabetics but you can stretch it to a full day if it is possible if you're a diabetic i would say eating twice a day one meal being light is probably a good idea and then in between just do not snack you know that will be considered fasting so you can just drink water or non-caloric beverages to keep you going now what are the risks otherwise for fasting with diabetes well fasting is an art right so not everybody can do it it's a form of discipline for people who are you know savvy in this but there are some pitfalls particularly for people who are dealing with multiple diabetic medications so the cliff edge of low blood sugar beckons as a primary concern so stripping away that the sugar coating when insulin or other blood glucose lowering medications continue their march without the usual caloric reinforcement then the blood sugar levels might decide to plummet, which is a scenario that is less than ideal for anyone. Now, another big deal for diabetics is ketoacidosis, right? So especially for people who are taking Jardines or Farsiga and you're fasting, and that can really increase the risk of ketoacidosis even for type 2 diabetics. 
In type 1, you know, ignoring the insulin, not taking insulin can actually trigger ketoacidosis as well. So for type 1, unless you're this perfect type 1 diabetic or a new type 1 diabetic who can go fast and without getting into trouble, you have tried it before, you may be able to do it. But most type 1 diabetics might some unwanted guests. They may crash the fasting party, especially, again, when you're uncontrolled type 1 diabetic. Now, when that happens, when your body doesn't have any insulin at all, then your body go into acidic pool party, if you want to call it. And then courtesy of high level of ketones, which are normally good for emergency fuel, right? Especially when you're on a keto diet or something. But when the glucose is very little and insulin is very little because you're not producing at all. Again, remember, very little insulin is good for you, but too much is not good. And if you don't have any insulin at all, your body go into that ketoacidotic range, which is not good, it can lead to all sorts of complications and actually eventually sometimes lead to death. Now, your liver, of course, plays a big role in this. Not wanting to miss out on any action might kick into overdrive, pumping out some glucose in the early fasting period. So you may be perplexed what's going on, but you know, for people with uh, diabetes, with insulin resistance, unfortunately, that high blood sugar in the initial hours or days of fasting may happen. So you don't want to panic about that. Give some time. And uh, if you use those glucose effectively, eventually your liver will run out of glucose, your insulin levels will come down. And if you do not binge eat when you break your fast, then you are going to be able to navigate fasting landscape, uh, keeping your insulin resistance down, and hopefully will be safe. So again, the most important thing is to be vigilant, uh, glucose monitoring, very important. Remember to use Dexcom or Freestyle Libre uh, is very important. A lot of people have psychological barriers. They don't want to carry anything on them, etc. But again, once you start using it, you realize how important to be able to be informed all the time about how your blood sugars are running. So the balanced diet, let's talk about that. So while, you know, fasting might seem like a break in your culinary creativity, it's anything but a holiday for your dietary needs, especially with diabetes in the mix. Even when the kitchen clock's hands are tied, ensuring that your meals pack a nutritional punch is crucial. Think of your food as a compact, nutrient-rich ensemble that needs to hit all the right notes in a shorter performance. High-fiber foods slow down glucose absorption, playing the long game in your bloodstream and keeping sugar spikes on the bench. You can pair that with some lean protein and you have a dynamic duo that helps maintain muscle mass and keep the hunger at bay. And of course, let's not forget the unsung heroes, the healthy fats, right? They deserve a standing ovation for their role in satiety and cardiovascular health, such as omega-3, such as olive oil, right? Remember, when the fast breaks, it is tempting to compensate with a feast fit for a royalty, but Moderation is the key. Always remind yourself, overloading the digestive system in one go is like expecting a sedan to win a drag race against a sports car. It is just not built for it. Instead, breaking the fast gently respects your body's pace and keeps blood sugar levels from skyrocketing or plummeting. A smoother ride on the glucose roller coaster. Remember that. Now, adhering to these guidelines won't just make fasting a feasible endeavor, it turns into a mastered art with diabetes management as the masterpiece. Again, remember, consult with your healthcare professional to tailor these strategies to your unique health profile and ensure that fasting brings health benefits and not just risks. Whether fast is Linked to a religious calendar or scripted for a corporal purification, the process is revered as a cleanse for body and spirit. Delve into the fast with clarity of purpose and beat penance or well-being. And remember, if you're a type 1 individual with brutal glucose control or your glycemic narrative often features the hypoglycemia, the low blood sugar, fasting might not belong in your script. In such cases, one's health script should remain unedited by fasting. In essence, fasting for the diabetic patron is a meticulous orchestration, modifying the medication, listening to the cues, avoiding excessive physical exertion, and tuning into one's physiological signals are all critical measures, guys and ladies. But thank you for watching. I hope you happy fasting and we'll see you in the next video.
Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. Uh, if you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.